Well, it's been cloudy all month, but I'm tired of seeing this giant box sitting here unopened. In this video, I'm going to rig up the giant Askar 185 APO for astrophotography and bring you along for the ride. I generally dislike unboxing videos and look what I got content in general. I think there's value in seeing my thoughts and considerations that go into getting a monster refractor like this ready for a night of imaging. I mean, I need to set it all up anyway, so why not press record? Full disclosure, Askar sent me and a few other astrophotographers their biggest refractor telescope for testing. So this monster will either find its way into the regular Astro Backyard telescope rotation or I'll pack it back up into its coffin size case and send it back. Let's get into it. The Askar 185 APO has a focal length of 1295 millimeters at F7. It weighs about 40 pounds when you have that dovetail plate and the tube rings attached to it. Nothing too crazy, but you definitely need a big boy mount for this scope. It's not so much the weight, it's the length. Like, look at this thing. The three and a half inch dual speed focuser looks and feels great. And I know you guys will install an autofocuser on this thing right away. What I really like is the dual finder bases on the scope for additional accessories like an ASI Air and the 360 degree field rotator. This is huge. You can of course use this telescope for astrophotography, but you can also use it for visual use with an eyepiece or better yet, a bino viewer. That would be sweet, I wanna get one of those. For reference, here's how big Bode's galaxy would appear at the native focal length of this telescope and a full frame camera. So this is a triplet APO with one massive piece of ED glass. This is essential for reducing chromatic aberration, but they don't mention what the glass material is. I know people like to obsess over this, FPL 53 and so on, but the Skywatcher Esprit refractors don't mention the glass they use either, and they hold up pretty well. The bottom line is if you do want FPL 55 glass, you can pick up a Stellar View 180 for 18 grand. You can run the Askar 185 in two imaging configurations, with a one-to-one -one field flattener at the native focal length at F7, or with the 0.8 times reducer to bring it down to F5.6. These accessories are sold separately, but the prices are reasonable compared to some of the other corrective lenses I've seen on the market. The Askar 185 comes with an inspection report, which is nice to see, but it doesn't include an optical test report like you see with many other refractors. We're really relying on the optics to be consistent coming out of the factory on a per unit basis here. Here's a closer look at the Askar 185 APO so you can see kind of the fit and finish of it. It's a nice kind of textured white coating on it. Looks very nice. Obviously it's the kind of copper colored accent, which looks nice on the dovetail plate and in the focuser knob and everything, but this section right here to me uh, doesn't really look super great. It's just a little bit much. I think most of you will probably agree with that. But the tube rings are nice. A little Askar 185 logo there. This is cool. The, the handle on top, nice and long and lots of options for mounting a guide scope on there. Thought that was pretty cool. The dew shield feels really good. Just one locking screw for that. Let's try and not blow the cap off. There we go. Yeah, so that's cool, nice and long. And then when you look down the scope, you can see all the light baffles, which is really nice to see. Here we go, looking at the lens, triplet ED APO, Askar, the unit number, the focal length, the diameter, 185. And then if you look through the tube, you can see the light baffles in there, which is great for, that helps create contrast and basically creates a better image. Hard to see on the camera here, but uh, it is quite a sight to behold, to look into, 185 millimeter ED glass like that. I've had the scope for about three weeks now and tonight is the night. I finally get to test it out under a clear sky. I brought it out last night in preparation for tonight's forecast and I just put the 365 cover on it. As you can probably imagine, choosing your first target for the biggest refractor telescope you've ever used is pretty exciting. Because I know you guys are gonna wanna see the optical performance of the Askar 185, I'll choose a broadband target. And I don't know about you, but I've always thought that the Running Man Nebula doesn't get the 
the attention it deserves, what with it being next to the most popular object in the night sky and all. Not only is this target a great fit for the focal length using the reducer in the camera I'm using, but it's a great test of the optics because there's lots of really bright stars in there. Okay, time to go outside and set everything up. I am super excited about tonight's imaging session and just pray that the weather gods are friendly to me tonight. To help maximize my field of view, I'll be using the 0.8 times Ascar reducer on the scope tonight. This will bring the focal length down to about a thousand millimeters and the focal ratio down to f5.6. I'll always gladly trade a little focal length for some extra light gathering power. I'm using a popular monochrome crop sensor camera tonight, the ZWO ASI 2600MM Pro with some broadband filters in front of it. By using a filter wheel, I can collect images in LRGB and combine them together to create a full color image. I thought about shooting one shot color tonight to really test the optics of this scope, but from a light polluted area, it just makes so much more sense to separate it through RGB in a mono camera. For those wondering, the image scale of this camera and telescope combo is 0.7 arc seconds per pixel a rare case of being oversampled in the Astro Backyard. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'll definitely want to run a dash of blur exterminator on the data when it comes time to process it. I attached a small 60 millimeter guide scope on top of the Ascar 185, which was really easy to install thanks to that slider style rail in the handle. I'll control the mount, a Skywatcher EQ8R Pro using the ASI Air via my tablet. I'll use the Air to point the telescope towards the running man, run the auto guiding, and of course take all the pictures. The plan is to take as many two minute sub exposures as I can through those LRGB filters. I think this should be the perfect exposure length for this broadband target. Ideally, I'll collect at least two to three hours on this target, but of course that will all depend on how much clear sky time I get tonight. So wish me luck. I spent all night shooting with the Ascar 185. It was awesome. I managed to collect about four hours of total exposure time on the Running Man Nebula before it ran into the trees. Let's take a look at the raw data. Okay, here's a stack of 34 times two minutes using the red filter. And if we apply an auto stretch here in Pix and Sight, you can see the data looks amazing. Look at the focal length, how up close this is to the Running Man. Looks really cool. Um, but if I go to the blue filter here and I apply an auto stretch, do you see those kind of flares on the bright stars? I mean, they're, they're bright stars, but there are much brighter ones than that. I feel like I've seen these types of flares before in an astrophoto, but usually on a really bright star like Alnitak next to the horse head. It's more pronounced in certain filters than others. I didn't really see it in the red. I see it again in the green and then again in the loom. So I don't know what to think about here. I'm not ruling out that uh, it's user error that I did something wrong, like there's a reflection or a light leak in there. Uh, I don't think it's the filters for sure. I'm using high-end chroma LRGB filters. So I was surprised to see that. I really hope it's something that I'm doing wrong because I really wanna like this scope. I really wanna keep using it uh, and I'm going to, uh, but those flares really stood out to me. I could even see them as the individual sub exposures were coming out. So I'm curious to know what you guys think about this and the more experienced ones out there uh, that can identify exactly what's going on here. But I just thought I would point that out. Next, we'll go to my final image reveal of the Running Man Nebula. It turned out pretty good, uh, but those, those light flares are in there on the bright stars.